It was on the 16th of March in 1957, at 8 a.m., that a UFO landed in a farmer's field in Alexandria, Virginia, USA. It had three occupants, two were male and the other one female. They all looked human, except for one thing. Their skin was so smooth that they did not have any facial creases, wrinkles, or even fingerprints. Sergeant Young and his partner were on duty for the local police force and went to the landing site with their guns drawn. The first male spoke to them, but not with his voice. He sent them a telepathic message explaining that everything was okay and to put down their guns. The two officers were stunned by this, but they did as they were asked. The man explained that his name was Valiant Thor and he had flown from Venus in his spaceship, Victor One. He would cause no problems, nor would his companions, Jill and Don. Thor then asked to be taken to see the President of the United States, who at this time was Dwight Eisenhower, and his Vice President was Richard Nixon. Valiant Thor was six feet tall with dark hair and brown eyes. He wore a one-piece suit that looked metallic in colour, and he communicated in English. Thor asked to be taken to the Pentagon. The officers obliged and he had transport arranged for him. Once there, he was interrogated and asked questions by the defense staff. Valiant Thor had certain powers of persuasion and it was reported that he used mind control to get what he wanted. Although he never forced anything violently upon anyone, he quickly convinced Pentagon officials that he must be taken to the president immediately. Using his persuasive techniques, Thor was taken to the president's office to be met by the president himself and his vice president, Richard Nixon. Thor invited President Eisenhower to go for a journey on his spaceship, Victor One. He wanted to take the president to Venus to meet the Galactic Council, but the president made various excuses and declined the offer. Instead, the president asked Thor to stay as his guest at the Pentagon, which Valiant accepted. Another technique of Thor's manipulation was his ability to make people see what he wanted them to see or not to see. He could also make them not see him, as attested to by Dr. Frank E. Strange, who had a meeting with Thor at the Pentagon. Dr. Strange said that he was not questioned by security as he made his way into the heavily guarded building. When he met Thor in a busy room, nobody else seemed to be aware that he and Thor were in that room having a conversation. Valiant Thor stated that he was a delegate from the Intergalactic Council sent with a message to help humanity find their way back onto a spiritual path and to deter them away from the weapons of mass destruction that they were in the process of creating. This was at the start of the nuclear age. Mankind's splitting of the atom had caused great concern within the galactic community. Thor told them that people from Venus, the Venusians, had been coming and going to planet Earth for a long time. And at that moment, there were 77 of them currently on planet Earth. Thor gave the president a letter in alien writing that had been written by the Galactic Council and he also gave him and the vice president the ability to translate and understand the message. The message offered the president the means to use a renewable energy system for the powering of electricity grids and a better, cleaner transportation system as an alternative to the combustion engine. As well as this, Thor would offer them new medical information and new medical practices that were far more beneficial than the medicine and procedures used on Earth at that time. Thor also came with a message that he and his people 
wanted to help humanity to advance to a higher level. Whilst the president considered these offers, Thor was given an apartment in the Pentagon. It was a fully furnished apartment with a wardrobe full of clothes. Thor had given his own suit to the scientists to study and it baffled them. It was a one-piece suit with no buttons, zips, pockets or cuffs. It was made of a material not of this world, a soft silver and gold coloured fabric giving it a metallic sheen. The scientists could not understand how Thor put it on or took it off. It was also an impenetrable material. The scientists put acid on it, but this did not mark it. They used a diamond tip drill, but the tip of the drill just broke off and they fired into it with different guns, but nothing could penetrate it. Thor was given access to the US space program where he gave advice on their projects as well as certain medical procedures, but Thor refused to aid the scientists with any progress in weaponry technology, and he refused to give recommendations in any manner regarding war efforts. He would also not discuss with them how he was able to travel from Venus and back on his spaceship. Thor allowed the scientists to study him, and when they questioned his lack of fingerprints, he explained that Earth humans are the only ones in the universe to have these marks. Thor studied the way that the Pentagon was run and came to the conclusion that it was a very confusing place. He also sensed that there was very little compassion or love between the people there and this concerned him. He had come with a higher message for all people. His messages had a religious note to them that humanity must return to God. Thor made it very clear that he could not force anybody to do as he asked, that he came with a message for the people of Earth and with an offer for new technology, but humanity must choose whether to follow his advice for advancing themselves or not. He wanted to talk to the governments of all countries, every politician and all the religious leaders, but the Pentagon were not keen on this idea. They tried to keep Thor locked up in his apartment, but of course Thor had ways of leaving the building undetected. Some reports said that he had the ability to walk through walls, others stated that he could make himself invisible so nobody saw him leave. And it was also claimed that he had the ability to teleport himself anywhere at any time. Thor passed on his message that he had come with ways to end sickness in humanity, both spiritual and physical. He had come with patents for new technology that would benefit all of humanity and would end poverty and hunger. He had a plan that would enable the earth to function without war, sickness, or even death. Thor proposed all this to the president, but after talking about it with his advisors and the Defense Department staff, the president rejected the ideas. When asked why he turned down all the peaceful suggestions, President Eisenhower told Thor that implementing his new system would cause disruption to the stability of the economy and that the revelation that the Venusians were here on planet Earth would create mass panic. On the 16th of March 1960, three years after his arrival, Valiant Thor disappeared from the Pentagon. He had rejoined his ship and his crew in Alexandria, Virginia, and was preparing to return to Venus. Valiant Thor's message to all humans the world over was given to the writer Dr. Frank Strange, who had visited Thor during his stay at the Pentagon. Dr. Strange recounts the whole story in his book, Stranger at the Pentagon. He describes a group called Central Control. The group were also called the High Council. They would oversee off-world missions from Venus. Central Control, as well as all Venusian civilization, 
is located inside the subterranean hollow of the planet Venus. Valiant Thor was chosen by this group to make contact with Earth. When discussing other life forms in the universe, Doctor Strange quotes Valiant Thor as saying, There are many beings that have never transgressed the perfect laws of God. Man does not possess the right to condemn the whole of God's creation because he himself has broken the perfect laws of God through disobedience. He links Valiant Thor to the figure of Christ and a number of sources point out the connections between UFOs, aliens and the occult. There is often a spiritual aspect to the reports of alien encounters which supports the notion that maybe we are dealing with the same creatures described in the Bible. Could it be that alleged alien encounters are actually modern interactions with angels and demons? There are several UFO religions around the world. These include Scientology, Chen Tao, Falun Gong, Heaven's Gate, Order of the Solar Temple, Realism, Universe People, Cosmic Circle of Fellowship, Church of the Subgenius, Fiat Lux, Ashtar Galactic Command, and the Seekers, which is also known as the Brotherhood of the Seven Rays. Will Valiant Thor ever return? We can only hope that the Venusians do not give up on us just yet. Let us know what you think in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe.